Father, we will praise you at all times. We will consistently speak and proclaim of your praises. Father, we will boast only in you. So, Father, today, God, let us gather together, proclaim who you are, your goodness and your mercy. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, will you have your way today? Father, I lay down my agenda and pick up your agenda. Because your ways are greater than my ways. Your thoughts are greater than my thoughts, God. Your goodness and your mercy is greater than I am. Oh, this wretched man that I am, that you saw fit to sing your only begotten son to come to earth to save us. So Heavenly Father, for these next few moments, will you open up our hearts, speak to us, that we will leave transformed, serving you and you alone. Father, we love you and we honor you. It's in Christ Jesus we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, praise team. If you guys can just sit back for just a quick second. Um, well, church, I want to welcome you to one church. My name is Pastor Ryan. I am the lead pastor of our church, and I'm always excited to be in the presence of, of believers. I don't know about you, but it does something for my soul when we can gather in such a way that where we can take time out throughout the week and just really, really just talk about who he is and what he's done and what he will continue to do. And you ever with us for the first time today, we, as a church, God gives us a, a word every year that really give us a guidance, give us some guardrails to really kind of focus into what God has called us to do. Last year, 2021, was a year to move forward, and this year, God has called our church to go deeper. And so I told our church last week, uh, get ready, because for the next eight weeks, maybe ten weeks, that we are going deeper and that the scripture that God gave me was Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. And this is what the scripture says. It says, and now, just as you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Because truth be told, many of us, as we get saved and we walk a life through Christ, that sometimes we, we stop following Christ. You know, we stop going to church. We, we stop doing those things that God has called us to do and who God called us to become. He says to continue to follow him, so let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him, that your faith will grow strong. The truth that you were taught will begin to overflow with thankfulness. So church, as we begin to really walk out these next several weeks, we are called to go deeper. My prayer is that you guys will continue to walk with me and go deeper, that you're not satisfied where you're at with your growth, that you're not satisfied where you're at. This sermon, this series is just as much as for me than it is for you. Because God is saying, Ryan, I can't, you can't lead the church where you're at. You can't lead your family remaining the same. You can't be that Christian that you were yesterday, that I need you to go deeper. And as I begin to look at last week, we talked about to go deeper, that we have to consistently stay connected. That God has called us to stay consistently stay connected to the source. And the key to going deeper is to stay close to the source. And the source is the living water. That you have to be connected to the source. If you look at a tree and its roots, the root system is always traveling in such a way that it's going deeper to find that water source. Are you connected to the source of the living water? That we have to consistently proclaim who he is. 
We looked at scripture where the disciples decided to take Jesus with them everywhere that they went, that they proclaimed who Jesus Christ was. I testified last week, you know, growing through my, my, my faith walk with Christ, that sometimes when I was out in the streets or just living life or going to work, that I, I didn't always take Jesus with me, right? That sometimes we, we get into certain environments that, you know, we want to kind of be cool with our friends or at the coffee shop, you know, and our conversation change. Our language change. Based on our surroundings, we'll de- determine where and who we say who God is. Then also last week we talked about that we have to consistently ask. That we should ask. Ask God to be with us. Ask that Christ would be with us. And so as we begin to look at our lesson for today, John chapter 14, verses 12, 15, and 18 says this. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me would do the works I have been doing, and they would do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Jesus was telling his disciples that they will begin to do greater things. And I talked about this a, a few weeks ago, maybe about the month and a half ago. I'm like, Jesus, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. You know, he, he walked on water. He, he began to raise the dead and heal the sick. So God is, Christ is telling us that if we are believers, that greater things that we are able to do because of the source that we are connected to. Man, we could put... What is it, wine? What's that wine place? Whatever. We can put them out of business, right, with some holy water. Amen? If Jesus turned water and wine, well, I don't think anybody else can do it. But the, the whole point is greater things that we can do. Verse 15 says this in John. He says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Next verse. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But, oh, y'all know about buts. I love big buts in the Bible, amen? (laughs) But, but you know him. For he lives with you and he will be in you. John chapter 16, verses 5 through 7 says this. But now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is good. It is for your good. That I go away, unless I go away, the advocate, the comforter, the helper, the sustainer of who we are would not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So for my title today is to go deeper with the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at it. It says deeper with. That's a partnership. Deeper with the Holy Spirit. And so we, we're going to sing this, the chorus or whatever to Holy Spirit again. Because truth be told that we can't go deeper without the Holy Spirit. And so if you just kind of faked it a little bit, this is your do-over. I want you to begin to really proclaim who Christ is and what God sent us as an advocate and a helper. And so the praise team is going to help us. It says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our heart longs for, to be overcome with your presence, Lord. And so, praise him. Just If you guys can just sing that for us real quick.
Father, we welcome you into our hearts. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our homes. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in the middle of our depression, in the middle of our anxiety, in the middle of our bitterness, in the middle of our rage. Holy Spirit, we, we welcome you in the middle of our marriages that are, are going astray. Father, we thank you, God, that there's restoration taking place right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in the middle of our brokenness. Father, we, we, we welcome you in the middle of our relationships, in, in the middle of our church and our jobs. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in the middle of our thoughts and our actions, even in our addictions, in the middle of our insecurities, in the middle of our pain, our doubts and our disbelief. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere. Father, it's your glory that our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence and not the presence of this world, not the presence of, this, of our enemy, God, not the presence of the things that we have the desires to, to take and buy or purchase, God, but your presence is the only thing that we seek. So Holy Spirit, have your way. We surrender it all to you today. Father, we wanna go deeper. We can't go deeper in you without the helper. So have your way, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, and we honor you. It's in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we say amen, amen. Thank you, worship team. See, the Holy Spirit is our advocate. It's our helper. It's the person that God sent to help walk this life out here on earth. And see, the truth be told that the Holy Spirit is misunderstood. Churches don't provide an accurate teaching around this matter. See, the Holy Spirit is an individual. The Holy Spirit is a person. And, and look at this startling fact. Nearly 60% of Americans who regularly attend churches, Christian churches, see that there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit. 60% of believers who attend church, that means they hear the gospel on the regular, that there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit. And here's another fact, that four out of 10 Christians believe that Satan is not a living being, but a symbol for evil. See, I have a problem with that. If you wanna quantify my, my studies, go back and look at Barner Research. Barner is a research company that is specifically given for Christians. See, I have a problem where 60% of Christians, that means six out of every 10 believers that's more than half. Don't believe that the Holy Spirit exists. You see, the devil wants to create confusion. He wants to remind you of who you are. You know, you're a liar and a gossiper and a cheater, a fornicator and a drunkard. And that's because the devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sins. But Christ knows your sins, but calls you by your name. See, he knows your sins. That's the attack of the enemy. He wants to call you about who you were. That's BC. If y'all don't know Pastor Ryan before Christ, man, oh, let me tell you, I was a hot mess. I'm still a hot mess on certain days. But before Christ, I've been redeemed now. I've been restored. See, we can't go deeper without the Holy Spirit. Six out of every 10 believers says there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit. 
That means they don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in the, that God is a triune God, that he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That means you don't truly understand the foundations of, of our Christian belief, which translates to that you don't understand who God is, that you don't understand our mission, that you don't understand our power, and you, most importantly, you don't understand our salvation. And so today, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. So let me just give you some backdrop about John chapter 14 and 16. This is the night before Jesus was hung on the cross. This was prior to Jesus washing the disciples' feet. This is where the disciples was talking with Jesus, and Jesus began to tell them that, you know, if the world hates you, remember that they hated me first. This is when Jesus is telling them that, you are the vine, I'm the vine, and if you abide in me and I abide in you, that you must remain in me. This is when Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples talking about, if they persecuted me, surely they will persecute you. And see, these are all golden truths, but the disciples saying, but wait, Jesus, why, why are you telling us all of this information? Because he's saying, I'm going away. I'm going back to the person who sent me here. But I won't leave you as orphans. I won't leave you as orphans. I'm going to ask the Father who sent me to send an advocate to help you walk out this life that we call Christianity. Because you can't do it by yourself. You don't want to do it by yourself. So we must understand this first point, that the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not a thing. It's not an it. It is a person. You have to get it. John chapter 14 says this, and this is one of our opening scriptures. John chapter 14 says this, verse 16. There we go. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you an, another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the word cannot accept him because it is neither, neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. And watch this. This is a teaching point. I want you guys to get this. Let's go back to verse 16 real quick. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Let's stop right there. We have, this is NIV translation, the New International Version. And I did this on purpose. As you're studying the scriptures, you have to be careful what version of the Bible that you're reading, because you will miss key points of what scriptures will want to say to you. What do you mean, Pastor Ryan? This is NIV version. And so, Ms. Judy, if you're quick to do this, if you're able to do it, I want you to bring up the New King James Version and pull that up on the screen real quick. Because the Scriptures is going to read the same but different. And I'm going to read this really quick. And I'm just going to point it out because I have it in my notes. The New King James, anytime I study, I always read King James Version first. Then I'll go to read New King James Version. For me to get the context of what I'm reading, I normally read NIV or the message or the, trans, the, the, the Passion Translation. The reason why I do that, because I want to make sure I get the original text as much as I can get it when it was translated. And this is what it says. It says this in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, which we heard that before, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another. In my translation in the New King James Version, there's a capital H for he. Why is that important? Because they're talking about the Trinity. They're talking about God. The scripture says this, and he will give you another helper, capital H, that he, capital H, may abide with you forever. 
the spirit of truth which the world cannot receive because it neither sees him, capital H, nor knows him, capital H, but you know him, capital H. This is so important. Once you see this capital H, we know that he's talking about our God. And if you're reading scriptures, another one just to give you a point of reference. When you're reading your, your Bible and you're studying the scriptures, when they're talking about God, watch out if it's a little G or a big G. Why is that? Little G's are referencing like the gods of, of, of idols, of bells. You know, the, the devil. But big G is, re, is referencing Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. So those small nuggets, when you're reading your scripture, it gives you so much more context to pull that in. Why is that important? It's because the Holy Spirit is the agent sent to accomplish the work here on earth. I want you to get that. The Holy Spirit is the agent, the person sent here to accomplish the work here on earth. See, the Holy Spirit is not a promise. It's not only a promise, it's a person. See, you can't have a personal relationship with stuff. You have a personal relationship with people. You know, like, I'm going to go take my car out, right? That's what we say, I'm going to go take my car out for a ride car can't talk back to you but if I say I'm gonna take Felicia out I'm gonna take her out because I'm in a personal relationship with her see we have attachments to objects but we have relationships with people oh it's quiet it's okay I'm gonna keep going your relationship with Jesus is the most important important relationship that you have your relationship with Jesus Christ will be the most important relationship ever. See, people struggle with having a relationship with something that they can't see. Pastor Ron, how do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? I can't tell you how. I can, I'm going to give you some pointers of how to cultivate that relationship. It just takes faith. You have to have faith. See, the Holy Spirit has been here from the very beginning. I talked about this a couple of months ago in Genesis chapter 1. When God, in the beginning, when he said, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And he goes and talks about, let us go down and make man in, in our image. He says, let us. Key point, us. That's the Trinity being spoken there. In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was in the very beginning. All of that. That's the Trinity. We have to begin to understand the deity, the deity of Christ, the progression of God. See, in the Old Testament, God the Father, all right, they put that up there. Let me go back real quick. I'm going to backtrack. This is New King James Version or KJV? New King James. See the difference. If you love me and keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father and he, capital H, will give you another helper, capital H, that he may abide with you forever. You see the difference in that? Big difference. Thank you, guys. Thank you, tech team, man. My tech team, boy, y'all own it. Love you guys. The progression of God. Old Testament, God the Father, Jehovah Jireh, he's our provider. He was holy. That's the Old Testament, right? God was holy in the Old Testament, so he spoke through prophets. Because he is holy that he cannot even come in the presence of sin. So he had to send his son to be our savior. And then he sent a helper to help us walk out this walk with Jesus Christ. With, um, with help us walk out our life as Christians. So how is God three persons? There might be a picture on the screen about um, water, ice, and steam. And so if you look at this picture... The Holy Spirit, we see Christ. We see the scriptures that Jesus is. God is God the Father, God the Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. 
And I normally use the illustration where there's water, there's ice, and there's steam. Water is H2O, but then if you freeze it, it becomes ice, which is Jesus. And if you boil it and the steam comes up, that's the Holy Spirit. The same component, but in three different forms. And that's how Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit is. See, the Holy Spirit is the agent sent here on, the, on earth to accomplish the work. Point number two, the Holy Spirit prompts. He prompts. What do you mean? He's our GPS. He's not our global positioning system. He's God's positioning system. See, the Holy Spirit positions us and tells us what we should do. Think about it. You guys got GPSs on your phones, and every time you go in a direction, they have to kind of reroute or whatever the case may be. Sometimes I'll call it my spotty senses, right? You know, um, if, you're, if you're going and walking, and you, you know, you're praying and asking God for certain things, and, you know, I felt that was kind of right. This is, what, you know, what, what I was leading to be done. You know, people are like, man, that was just, I felt it in, in my spirit. That was the Holy Spirit speaking to you what you should and should not be doing. It's not spotty senses. It's not an unction. It's the Holy Spirit prompting you to do what is right. See, the Holy Spirit gives us direction, not destruction. The Holy Spirit gives us direction and not destruction. So I'm asking you this, how often do you listen to the Holy Spirit? How often do you dismiss the Holy Spirit? If you've been walking with God for some time, the sins that you have left in your life are the sins that you like. If you've been walking with God, if you've been on this journey as a Christian for some years, the sins that remain in your life are the sins that you like. Because I promise you, the Holy Spirit has been prompting you to do something about it. The Holy Spirit has been telling you and being revealing things to you that you should not be doing, the things that you should be saying. What God has revealed to you in your prayer time are the things that God wants you to deal with first. The things that God has been talking to you, the things that God has been telling you to do, the things that God has been revealing to you for quite some time. But how do you do that? Like, how do you begin to grow close and cultivate this relationship with the Holy Spirit? Just to be still. How can I learn to listen to the Holy Spirit? Three things, and this is not in the notes. You can read, you can pray, and you can remove. Read scripture, spend time with God, memorize the scriptures. Join a C group. C groups are what we call life groups. It's that midweek recharge where you, you know, where you kind of have that reset during the week before you get back to church on Sunday. Begin to memorize scripture, take it to heart that I'm not ashamed of the gospel, that it's the power that brings salvation. Pray his word. God desires that we pray his word back to him. God desires that we proclaim his word back to him. And they can begin to remove the noise and the busyness of your life. In 1 Kings, um, there's Elijah. I think it's 1 Kings chapter 4, 18 or somewhere around there. I'll get it for you guys. But Elijah, he, he began to put his head between his knees. Why is that? He was trying to remove the distractions of his life. Clear your schedule. Wake up early. Early shall I seek him. Scripture tells us, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, I will come in and we will begin to have dinner or, or supper. Or begin. I will eat with you and you will eat with me. God is knocking at your door. He's been knocking for a while. Only thing you have to do is open it up. Point number three, the Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit prompts, and lastly, the Holy Spirit provides. 
What do you mean by he provides, Pastor Ryan? He provides gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and 11 says this. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. That means the giftings that God has given us, that he has endowed with us. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. And Jason, can you bring that podium up for me real quick? And that's this glass, so be careful. Verse 8 says, for the one is given to the, the word of, of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith, the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same of the Spirit works in all of these, distributing them each as individually as he wills. So why do I have milk up here? And Jason, I'm going to have you run to the back. I'm, I'm going to need a, a deep spoon. Yeah, deep spoon. You got to go deeper. So I'm going to speak a couple of different things real quick. I've been to churches where they taught that you're not saved unless you speak in tongues. That is a lie. That is a lie from the pit of hell. I'm going to call it like it is. You do not have to speak in tongues to be a believer. There's churches and pastors that's out there that would teach that you're not truly saved unless you have the gifting of tongues. That's not what scripture says. And because there's so much about the Holy Spirit, there may be a part two next week. So I want to do this. You know, I like illustrations. So when God formed us, he shaped us and formed us, right? He has our vessel. But when you, give, when you give your life to Christ, he makes us, he washes us, what the scripture says, like white as snow, right? So this, this milk is the washing of believers once you give your life to Christ. Man, this, this, this is some good stuff right here. So as believers, the Holy Spirit is, it endows us. He inhabits our, our presence. Thank you so much. So the Holy Spirit, amen, Hershey's shirt, amen. The syrup. So every believer, once you give your life to Christ, Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit gives us to each one of us a gift. So there's some giftings, right? Some of us have a little bit of giftings, but we all have giftings. God has endowed some to have more. So here I am, a believer, redeemed and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, everything that the enemy has called dirty, I'm now clean. Everything that the enemy says that I'm not, God is saying I am. Because he has washed us. And so, God has given us giftings. But I begin to ask myself, they're just sitting. If you are a believer, the Holy Spirit has poured into you gifts. And as scripture just read, it's not for me, it's for the profit of everyone else. But then why in the world are my gifts just sitting there? You know what, God says, you know what? The assignment that I have on your life, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna pour out more gifts in your body.
There's a lack in the church, big C, every church. Not only one church, but every single church across the world. There's a lack where believers are sitting on their gifts. You may say, but Pastor Ryan, you have a full praise team up here. <laughs> if you know the hurdles that we had to jump through this morning. Y'all saw my wife back there playing the keyboard? That's, that's not her first gift. Well, let me rephrase that. That, that, that is not her first talent. Because there's a difference between gifts and talents. See, talents, you can cultivate. Talents, you can go to the gym and work on it day after day. Talents are just skill sets that you can produce over a period of time that if you give it time and energy, it can be perfected. But the gifts that Christ gives us as believers, we're still sitting there. And so this is just a plug. If you're not serving, if you call this your church, you need to be serving somewhere. We need your gifts. This community needs your gifts. But you say, Pastor Ryan, we have eight people that sing and we have all the musicians, but we need more. We need, we need more tech people. We need more people back in the back with the kids and our youth. We need more people greeting people. We need more people on Sunday, on Wednesday nights. We need you stop sitting on your gifts. Because, you know, hey, we're a believer. And I'm filled with the Holy Spirit because there's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. But God is saying, Ryan, I don't need you to sit on it. I need you to stir those gifts up. And it's something about when you begin to stir the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Boy, that's going to turn into some good chocolate milk right there. Let's get a, a mighty amen. And that's what God wants us to do. It's just not to sit on our gifts. He wants us to stir up the gifts that's within you. He wants you to begin to stir up the gifts that God has endowed with you. He wants you to use your gifts for everyone else and not just for yourself. Praise team, let's just go and make your way back up top. Man. My prayer and I might do, like I said, part two of this because I didn't even hit on really the fullness of what the Holy Spirit is. I need a whole series of just the Holy Spirit by itself. God desires us to utilize our gifts and yes, our talents to give him glory because the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit provides gifts and talents and the Holy Spirit prompts. He is our GPS, he's God's positioning system because if you have faith to believe for salvation, you have to have the faith to know that if God said it, he would do it. I don't know where you're at with your walk with Christ right now, or if you're even walking with Christ. The Holy Spirit is a person who helps us. And so I'm going to ask you today as we stand, if you desire to be in a fellowship of believers who are going to, going to heaven, and if you never proclaim Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just, I just encourage you just to come up front. Let our leadership team pray with you. Let us do the, the prayer of salvation. But most importantly, know that we have a person that God has sent to help us walk this out. And know that you have the power and the ability to walk with him as he empowers you to do the work of the Lord. He hasn't called us to do it by ourselves. He has an advocate and a helper. 
and the helper is not her she served, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, God, we thank you, God, for who you are. Father, we proclaim that your goodness and your mercy is so good that you sent a person, an individual by the Holy Spirit to help us walk out this walk as a believer here on earth. And we know that it gets challenging sometimes. So Father, continue just to guide us and lead us in all truth, in all ways. God, we thank you, God. We love you and we honor you. God, I pray for that person who may not be a believer today. God, they may be straddling the fence that they've been playing church week after week. God, I pray, God, that you begin to prompt them, that you will begin to to begin to guide them to the front, God, so that way we can pray with them and encourage them that they are not alone. Just as we dedicated earlier, God, that we have a group of believers that want to walk with them and challenge them and encourage them to walk this walk out of faith day by day and do it with a group of believers. Father, I pray for those who want to rededicate their lives today, that they will begin to come forward, God, as we pray with them, God, that they begin to walk a renewed life in Christ. And God, I pray for that individual who has dismissed the promptings and the guidings of the Holy Spirit, that they will begin to listen to them and follow them the rest of the days of their life. And God, we will give you the glory and the honor that's due to you. It's in Christ that we pray. Center of it all. 